welcome you all on behalf of UCI Alumni Association to Anteater Wellness Wednesday. This is a virtual series that uh, happens every month where we present topics to promote wellness and hope to anteaters across the globe during this unprecedented time. So we're thankful that you're here tonight. We hope you enjoy, and we're gonna have lots of fun at painting Peter the Anteater, our beloved mascot. So a few housekeeping tips. Uh, if you um, might heard me say just a little bit earlier, but if, um, if you want, go grab a pair. If you don't have it with you, grab a pair of scissors and um, also the printout of Peter. We, I sent an email um, earlier today around three o'clock about uh, that showing you, oh, you can have opportunity to print out Peter. And that'll uh, work for a template for us that um, our um, talent tonight will guide us through. So, and you also need um, a pair of scissors and then obviously some of the other items that were in the previous communication. Everyone is muted, uh, but feel free to use the chat function. For those of you who are new to Zoom, it's all the way down at the bottom and it looks like a little thought bubble. And we would love to have you interact with one another if you wish. However, you should be busy with your paintbrush and your utensils on um, working on Peter, but um, also use the raise the hand um, function, which is under the smiley face and reactions. And um, I, right now we have two exemplary people using that. So I have one that says, Jennifer Wong, you have a question. Do you wanna un um, unmute yourself and ask us? I don't, I'm sorry, I forgot to oh. unraise my hand. I apologize. Well, that's okay. So she, you, she showed us how to use that. And then um, <laughs> we have one other person who raised their hand. Do you wanna unmute yourself and ask your question? Okay, someone else testing out. So no problem. That's and so we're this is going to be an informal evening for us to enjoy. So don't be too worried about the um, the unmuting yourself and asking a question, but you can also put it in the chat function. We may um, have to mute you if there's interaction with one another, there's feedback or whatever. So um, if you get muted and you can't get unmuted or something, just add, um, talk to me in the chat. From there. So um, this event will be recorded. You see the recording button. You might have even had to um, give permission to let it know it's going to be recorded. Just want to let you know we are going to repurpose this and use it during homecoming, of course, and have a booth there where people can watch this and they can um, paint um, Peter the Anteater too. So just wanted to let you all know that that's what we're doing. Oh, so, on to our event. Yes. I want to thank Michelle Strazeri, class of 2005, for being our anteater talent tonight. Michelle is the CEO of Queen of Arts, a fun creative company for adults and children. Their events are known uh, to attract celebrity clientele, companies such as Boeing, Snapchat, American Girl, and the Ritz-Carlton have all used uh, Queen of Arts. She was named top five mompreneur for Parenting OC Magazine. Is that fun or what? And an advocate for art education and all economic backgrounds, Michelle and her family have taught classes in Manila, Philippines and donated much needed art supplies. She graduated from UCI with a Bachelor of Arts, um, a degree in criminal law and society and is a member of the Delta Delta. The Delta sorority. And she met her husband, a fellow alum, Michael, in the dorm halls of Middle Earth. Hey, show me a reaction if you lived in Middle Earth. I want to see that. Um, and she and Michael are celebrating their 13th anniversary this year, and they are proud parents of four beautiful kids. And you can't tell She's completely disguised from it. She is expecting another one in April. So we got her just in time. So thank you so much, Michelle. And I'm going to have you take it away. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be such a fun night. And I am just so glad that everybody took the time, middle of the week, 
to do something creative. And I really hope that this is going to be a fun class for all of you. Here is the preview of you, what you're going to be making today, your own version. So don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like this, but we will go through everything together step by step. Um, I just want to make sure we've got all of our supplies ready. So I'm going to just jump right in. The first thing is your template. It kind of looks like this. If you have this with you, uh, we're just going to go through this as our guide. So we're actually going to be just cutting out the template here. So that way we can put it onto our canvas and it just gives it a little bit more of a relaxed paint party instead of just trying to do a few different things. So if you've got this, let's start cutting this out. Here's the one thing when you have your legs right here, there's two little legs. I want you to just cut around the perimeter of Peter. So you don't have to necessarily do all the insides or anything like that. We'll draw that in, but just cut around the perimeter. And I see that we have some kids in our class, which is so fun. So if you need help cutting, ask your parents around you, but let's start cutting that. And a couple of things I wanna also make sure you have is of course your canvas. So the canvas way, we're gonna be putting our canvas horizontally like this. So make sure you have it flat this way. And then your paint colors. So really I try to make it as easy and as simple as possible. So we really just need three colors for this class. Uh, but what I hope that this encourages you to do is continue to color and continue to paint even after we do our class. So you can definitely take it all sorts of different ways after class and uh, you know create, start creating a bunch of different things. But I'll show you my plate. So here's what I've got. I've got yellow, the dark blue, and I always do two puddles of white. So that way we always have a nice clean white. So as long as you've got those basic colors, we'll be doing a lot of blending and a lot of different things to get this effect. Uh, but feel free to just do your own thing. If you would rather, you know, paint a different setting all together, um, you know, whatever you want to do. I want this to be your time to be creative. Uh, and I really appreciate everybody coming in and uh, and getting everything ready. I see that some, some people have like a whole setup in their house. So um, that's so exciting. Uh, I want to go ahead and make sure also that you have your brushes. I have a rinsing cup and you could tell that I paint a lot because there's a, a bunch of paint on this but a rinsy cup of water and three brushes, small, medium, and large. Three rinsy cup of water and uh, three brushes. So we'll go ahead and start cutting and then we'll get started really soon. I feel like I should be playing Jeopardy music or something, right? <laughs> And this is totally really, like Wendy said, it's really casual. So if anybody has any questions at all, um, you know, feel free to let us know. We're, we're here to help too. Aside from your scissors, I see everyone cutting, which is so great. Make sure you have a pencil too, because we'll be tracing it out together. Um, but I see a lot of people. I just want to do a little bit of shout outs around here too. Um, but my sister is on here and she's got her whole crew and they're doing a little paint party at their house. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and it, ha it has um, JV and my sister Brinkley and they have five people that made this into an entire event and um, getting a paint party together. So I hope you have fun and I hope that everybody at home, if this is your quiet time, this painting is so great for quiet relaxing. I promise you because the painting looks simple enough. But if you're like the type of person that loves detail and like wants to get really, really in the fine tune of everything, this is perfect too, because you can let it dry once, paint it over again, same color, same procedure, and it'll just get a nice rich color. Um, so that's really great. If you are more like free flowing and just love to just kind of splatter paint everywhere, this background is all yours. You can do all sorts of different directions and te texture. So I really hope that this kind of fits everybody's needs. Um, and again, if you have any questions for me too, uh, and for Wendy as well, uh, let us know. And I hope that this just kind of kickstarts any sort of creativeness to you that you have. Uh, Queen of Arts, we've been around for um, a while, but with this, um, all the restrictions and the COVID, we've actually started an online school for kids. So we get to do an online class for children every week. Um, so that's been a lot of fun too. 
So we're all sorts of different things and we'll just make sure that we get everything started. Let's see if anybody has questions too. See some young future anteaters here, huh? Yay. Oh, fun. And, and if, if this is anybody's first time painting too, let us know or raise your hand. Um, if this is, you know, if you're like a, a pro and you're painting all the time, this is also great for you too. So uh, all sorts of things. And I love seeing kids. Is it, it says Tensi and um, Sarah, I can't pronounce the last name, but, but um, I see that you have your son with you. So that's so exciting. Well, I hope you enjoy and you're all covered up. You get, you got your smock on and everything. So that's good. Um, I see Jennifer Risner. She's cutting her painting, her, her template out already. Good job. I see, is it Chams is cutting? She's got Xavier's soccer shirt on. Hey, you guys are all doing great. Jason Lee and company over there getting, getting the party started. Margaret's already got her. Uh, Margaret Smith has got hers in there too. Awesome. I see Margo and Emily Reyes. I see that you have your family with you. That's so exciting. And John Duong. Hey, John. I know John too. So that's so exciting. So guys, if you have your family here too, this is so great because it's not, you know, it's not every day that I'm sure that you can just like bust out all your paint and like start painting with your kids. So enjoy this time. Don't feel like you have to follow our directions, you know, completely. Um, like Wendy said, this class is going to be recorded too. So don't feel like you need to catch up, but I kind of want it to be as simple as possible. So no matter where you are in your painting, you'll know where, where to go um, next. And uh, it's just something really fun. So I'll let you guys get cutting. Just to let you know, I know that some of you have got your templates ready. So just so that you know what you're doing next, you're gonna take your blank canvas and we're going to sketch out your template. So I'm gonna get here. I'll cut around with you really quickly. And when you're cutting, you don't need it to be, you know, something fancy. It doesn't have to be really accurate. I mean, the thing with art is it could really be your interpretation, especially even though, you know, our anteater is like a fellow love character that we recognize. This is your version. So don't worry too much about it being accurate. So just do your best. And then we will just, what you do is you just put your anteater right in the middle. And then we just trace them out. And then we will do step-by-step -step together, getting that UCI logo on there and then getting his eye placement. So we'll do that all together too. So take a minute to do that. I'm gonna cut around here. Michelle, if I don't have a canvas, can I just put it on a piece of paper? Yeah, you. that's actually a good question. If you don't have a canvas, you could totally print this out and just paint on this. Um, oh. or just get like, this is a good template too for drawing. When we do our art class, we have an online school called the Queen of Art School. Um, we do a lot of drawing too. And these templates just give us a chance to like learn to draw. So if you have kids, this is a good coloring page that you can make too. Um, you can dress up the anteater and put like tie dye shirt, you know, you can really like go crazy. So you could definitely don't necessarily need a canvas uh, to paint. And that's actually a, another good question. A lot of times, because you don't always necessarily have like hundreds of these lying around, you can also just use whatever you have at home too. Like I think that the Nordstrom gift boxes are the best canvas to use because it's just smooth. So if you wanna just use like a gift box, um, even like paper bags to paint on, I mean, I swear, like you you can paint on anything. If you can paint on rocks, you can paint on mm -hmm. all sorts of things. So Nordstrom gift box are the best. Another reason why to, to shop there, I guess. <laughs> but I like using their, their um, canvases too, as a canvas. So if you've got your ant eater, super cute. You just put them right in the middle. And you just wanna trace around just exactly where you cut. So you're just gonna go around very lightly. This is just a guide. So we're gonna be painting over this pencil line. So don't feel like you need to press really hard to get in there. As long as you can see the pencil line, that is the most important thing. Tricky part is right here, just getting the tail, but you wanna just go around best you can. 
under his belly. Right over here. And you should have in the end a silhouette. So you should have some sort of silhouette. Might be hard to see because of the lighting, but I've just got the silhouette in there. So once you've got your silhouette, and then look, you have a little souvenir and you can just kind of keep this around too. So once you've got this part, you're going to use this template as a guide to see all the different areas that you might have to look at too. So for example, he's got the UCI shirt right here. You're gonna make a line connecting the top of the tail to the bottom of the feet. So it's gonna be a line here. So you've got your canvas and you're gonna make a line here and then a line right before the ears and then towards the back of the front feet is gonna be the other line that you're gonna be putting on. So it's gonna look like this, so two lines. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna get your two lines in there. So you've got that. So we'll just stay there. I know that I see some of you cutting still too. So again, totally take your time. If you're cutting, keep on cutting too, and then go ahead and trace it out. But once you're ready, we're just gonna really just mimic exactly what your template looks like. So the other steps after your tracing is just going to be getting that shirt part in. And then putting that eye in. So once you're ready, you've got your, your outline, go ahead and put this eye in. That might be the trickiest part. But like when I see, I see it's like, I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of looks like um, one of those, Wendy, what's that candy in Halloween that is candy corn? Okay, candy corn. See how it kind of looks like a candy corn, the eye? Like a sideways candy corn? Oh, so it does. I kind of have to use that kind of visual to like help me, all right, draw the shape. So if you can think candy corn eyes, right? Put it right in here. And that is going to be our eye for Peter. How is everybody doing good? See, everybody's working on their own station. Someone said it looks like an acrylic nail. Yeah, someone, <laughs> especially with the moon. There show. you go, acrylic yeah. nail. Yeah, it does. See how you can kind of, you know, imagine anything. It does look like an acrylic nail. So once you've got this, I see everyone's got their template and it's all sketched out. Good job. See everybody working hard. And then the other tricky thing is the feet. See how the feet right here, there is this little scoop and a scoop to separate his four feet. So you're just gonna take your pencil and just mimic, just have your stencil um, next to you so you can have it and then just curve so that you have two feet in the end. And then get your UCI logo right in the inside. And I just do your best and just make your block lettering and just put U, C. I mean, the good thing is our letters are really kind of simple. So it's, so it's not like we have some really difficult letters like X is a really hard letter to like do a block lettering or like M or W, but UCI, you know, that's, that's, that's achievable. We got that. Hey, Michelle, we have a couple of questions. What is mm -hmm. the, carbon, what is the carbon paper for? Oh, that's a good question. If you have your carbon paper, that is another option. So if you have your carbon paper, which is you so can cool. actually so retro carbon paper, right? I know you, if you have your retro, your, your carbon paper, you can actually place your template right behind the carbon paper, press really hard and it comes out as a stamp. So you kind of bypass the cutting and also the kind of the outlining. So if you have your carbon paper, all you have to do is just put your printout right on top and put the carbon paper under it press really hard and then that way you can get the outline 
too. So that is just another way. The carbon paper is great too. So you can definitely use that multiple times and do a lot of different uh, sketches onto your canvas. That's a really great technique if you want to do another project or something like that too. So carbon paper, template, carbon paper, template, press really hard, and then you can get it exactly like your, um, like your template. So that's a good question. So that answers our next question because someone said, I already used the tracing paper and traced it. That will work. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Chams, good job. If you've got that. Um, and then Ann Chung, who asked that question too, if you've got that too, perfect. You are, you're ready to go. So as long as you've got that, um, that really does help. Sometimes that helps, especially have, if you have kids with you, um, it gives them a little bit of a guide. But I feel like that, that just steps it up if you have that carbon paper. So I'll give you a few more minutes and then we're gonna get started. So I see that some of you are ready to go. If you're ready to go, do me a favor because we have a gallery view so I can kind of see everyone. Um, that way I can pinpoint if anyone has questions. But if you're ready, can you show me your canvas? That way I know, all right, we're ready to do the next step. And if you're still working on your tracing, don't even worry, keep on tracing. You'll catch up, no problem. Perfect, okay, I see everyone's got it done. Okay, so first thing, I know I see that a lot of you are either painting on your own or painting with your family or painting in a big group. So first thing we're gonna do, and every part of we do, you take a deep breath, let the whole day go, you got this. Turn to a neighbor next to you, whoever's next to you and say, you can do this. Or tell yourself you can do this. Sometimes you need that too. Give them a high five if you're around them. If your kids are with you, give them a big hug and then just enjoy this time. Just really, really enjoy this time. Take pictures, remember it, capture those memories because um, it goes by so quick. We're going to get started. We're going to go through our three brushes. So on our list, we asked for three brushes. And I'm going to use this brushes specifically, but feel free to use whatever brush works for you. But we've got our largest brush, largest, largest brush. This is what we call our king brush. So if you got this brush, and the one thing is you want to hold your brush like you would hold a pencil. So you're holding it really strong. And then what we do is we have two different ways that we paint. We paint up and down, up and down. So we're flipping the brush, flip, 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 flip. This is what we call mermaid tail. And then if you hold your brush standing up tall, so the bristles are this way, you're going to paint side to side, side to side. This is what we call the windshield wiper. So largest brush that you've got on your set is your king brush. Last two, find, if you have two more brushes, find your middle brush. Like what would be your middle brush? This is what we call our queen brush for our company queen of art. So we say queen brush. And then we've got your small baby brush. Small baby brush, actually, you're gonna be using the baby brush a lot for this painting because it's a lot of little details. We got these three. The brush that I want you to use first is your queen brush, which is your middle brush. And we are gonna just dive right in. We're gonna paint Peter first. So if you're ready, we're gonna paint all the yellow around here. Take your queen brush, hold it really tight, get your plate of paint. Again, we just needed yellow, blue, and then two puddles of your white. Go ahead and drag a little bit of white. Drag a little bit of white. Get on your brush very slowly. Start from the back, but trace it out first. Trace, trace, trace. And just trace all around. It's okay if you still see your pencil line. If you're using a carbon paper or if you've used a pencil, it's okay if you see that those lines because we're going to do a couple coats. So go ahead and go around. especially if you have kids there too. It's always good to have like a little barrier. That way you know, okay, we're painting that side. Now hop onto the other side and do the front, but trace it out too. Don't be afraid to paint over lines or if it's too exact, you know, don't worry too much about getting it on, on anything too. Just do your best. Again, we're using the middle brush, but if you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush or a larger brush, you do you. You guys can do whatever you want. Go around the eye. And then go out this way. Take your time. Enjoy the process too. 
grab a little bit more paint. And then keep on going and then fill it in. We're gonna do for this class, we're gonna do an intro to shading and a bunch of different things. I'm gonna go back and zoom into our sample. So you'll notice that there's a lot of different shading that we did here. Uh, I painted the yellow twice. I painted it once to just have a nice base and I let it dry. And then I came back and I painted it uh, time. So we're gonna do that here too. So get a nice coat. Hold your brush nice and steady. And just go all the way around and do the back. Don't be afraid to use a lot of paint too. Sometimes when you're painting really small detailed areas, kind of need a lot of paint just to get it really vibrant. So you've got this. And make sure you've got ears. And then you've got your cute little ant eater, something that looks like this. So I'll give you a minute here. See everybody focusing. Good job. And it looks like Lan Nguyen, you look like you have your family there too. So that's exciting. It looks like your son's painting with you. So you look so focused. Good job. Juna G, it looks like you have your family with you too. So that's exciting. Good, good, good. Aaron Simpkins, I see you focusing over there. Ania Massimino, I see you focusing too. Lauren Smith, I see you focusing there. Good job, guys. So keep it up. Again, we're going to do this. You're going to do two coats of this, too. Ooh, Jason Lee, the, the, um, the party group there with their easels, they, they all show their, look at, yeah, show you guys, everyone there. Good yep. job. Woohoo. What a talented crew. And eaters in the house. <laughs> nice. Now you're gonna have to see where you're gonna put your, your painting too. I'm sure that this might inspire you guys to continue to paint a bunch of different things. Good job, everyone. Looks like, uh, is it Gabrielle Cobos? You look like you have a party going on there too. I love I it. I know. Hey, um, it's is it Tensi? Oh, she just walked away, just went. Tensi, I see a stuffed animated anteater in the background. I spy an anteater, show it to everybody. That is so fun. Look at him, wow. Oh, Legit colors too, authentic. I got this when I graduated back in 2003 from the anteater from the UCI bookstore. Oh, is that the bookstore? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's from the bookstore. 2003. 2003. <laughs> Speaking of the UCI bookstore, the bookstore has really just like changed so much since, I mean, like every time I go there and visit, it just like, it seems like it, everything's just always upgraded. Like the bookstore was like this little place that you just like went and just got your books and left. But now it's like just a beautiful store. It's amazing. I know there's amazing things that you can, magazines and stationery, candles, uh, you know, it's a, a, a nice spot for the students. You yeah. Know, you all, if you haven't been on campus lately or um, been across the street at UTC, University Town Center, there's a Target there now, so students can go over there and get their supplies that they need there. And then there's also um, a mini, Nissan, I don't know if, uh, a, an amazing Asian um, little retail store there that has really fun things. It's perfect for dorm rooms. We currently have actually, I believe, almost 7,000 students living on campus even during, um, during this time. Um, I, campus can hold up to 14, 15,000 students, so we have about half. They, most of them all, I think they all, have their own um, dorm room right now so that's all singles and um so there is some campus going on there and it's amazing how uh, the covid 
um, the controls that the testing students are tested um, once or twice a week. So um, everybody's we've had really low rates. So we're really thankful for that. Different cool. year being a student now. Can you imagine compared to when you all were there? Everything's all instructions remote, except for if you're a, um, some of the, the grad students are on campus, of course, and people doing research. But it's, um, I left my office, I think March 19th. And here we are, still here. But yeah, go visit campus because campus is open and Aldridge Park is gorgeous. You can walk around and, and enjoy the park. No, no parking right now. No fee for parking right now. Yeah, oh, so you, know, nice. you can go and, and tool around um, Aldridge Park. It's gorgeous. Especially right, it's coming, well, no, it's more like June when the um, those trees, um, oh, what are the purple trees called? Ooh. Jacaranda. Jacarandas, you get the 50 million, <laughs> yeah. Jacaranda. <laughs> If you're Hispanic, Hakaranda. Hakaranda. <laughs> yeah, those are the, the gorgeous around campus. That is true. It's just, and that's interesting to see that they're still, I was always curious if students were still on campus or moving, but half is really good. Like, you know, for what the capacity is too. Are all room. like the cafeterias open too, like for them to? It's, you know what? It's grab and go. You can imagine. So there's no indoor dining. Oh yeah. So everything's you know order online, pre pack you know, and then they package up. It, it's amazing too, just in the past few year, years, um, what they do for special diets. You know, more people are finding out they have food sensitivities and you know gluten, vegan. Um, the dining has really um, taken that. Um, into consideration and are helping students with that. Cool. Well, that's exciting. Well, perfect, guys. I see everybody's working really hard. If you are ready for the next step, if you're ready, if you're working on getting your yellow done, keep on working. If you're ready for the next step, the next step is taking out your detailed brush, that smallest brush. We are just going to paint the UCI letters. It's just white, plain old white. So super simple. So you're just getting a little bit of white, and just painting right inside, U, C, I. So just get, and it's the reason why we do white is everything you're painting, it all matters. So even though it's white and you, and I get students all the time from our kids class, like, well, why are we painting white when the canvas is white? Well, when your painting is complete, you don't want to have any of your canvas, you know, kind of exposed or bare. So it does affect it in the very end. So get your U, C, I, paint it in just once, and then when you're ready, you're going to also take your baby brush and you're going to paint that the blue. So this little part right here where the UCI letters are, you're going to take a little bit of blue, same brush. So we're still using that smallest brush. And I want you to just shape it out best you can. Your white might still be wet and that's okay. Sometimes that white gets pulled into that blue and it's actually really nice. So don't worry about any of your colors mixing too, but here's a little sense of what you should be doing. So right now you should be working on getting your yellow done and then also kind of setting aside or making that border for your shirt. And then slowly and take your time, go ahead and paint the inside of your UCI shirt. And this is, as I mentioned before, if you're one of those that love details, like really getting into the fine details, you're gonna love this because you kind of have to go around the U and the C, UCI, and you're just gonna use your smallest brush to do so. So enjoy that. I always feel like when I'm doing this part portion of it, feels like one of those like adult coloring book things where you're just like getting really into like the nooks and crannies of stuff. So you just do your best. Don't be afraid of the white blending in with the blue. That just gives us a little bit more texture and character. You'll notice in the sample, it's not completely, it's got a little bit of shading too. It might be hard to see, but that white on your blue is totally okay. Go around your C.
get right here. And when we're doing this shirt, we're gonna do this twice too. So get your first coat in. All in here. And if you feel like your UCI letters are getting smaller and smaller as you go because you're painting onto the blue, um, don't you worry, we'll let this blue dry and then it'll kind of reappear. We'll let it dry and then you can make that white again a little bit later. Just do your best. As long as you could see the letters there, we'll know it says UCI. And in the end, you should have something that looks like this. And if you guys are ready, you could show, show uh, you're in the, our gallery view so I can see everybody's painting. So go ahead and you can show me your paintings too. That way I know what step you're on too. Fabulous. I see Gabrielle Cobos. I saw Jennifer Reisner. Jennifer Wong's looks good. Ania's looks good. Natalie Marquez, you guys, beautiful. Lauren Smith, nice. I like your shading there too. I love that everybody's doing their own thing and adding their own little flair to it. Good job, everybody. I see everybody focusing too. Good job. Let's go around. Good job, Ada Clark, that looked good. Then we're gonna start working on our background too. So background's a lot about different textures. Um, as you're painting and finishing this part up, uh, when we're going to do the background, we're going to use our large brush, and I want it to be completely free-formed. Normally, if we have a specific painting, I instruct like our kids to just paint side to side, all the way down, one small motion. But with this painting, the more texture, the more kind of outrageous your strokes are in the background, the more your painting is going to really have a lot more character. Since we're not putting like a background in the, you know, we're not adding anything else to it and we're just really focusing on Peter, uh, your brush strokes is what's going to create the dimensions for your painting. So we're going to add a bunch of different stuff. Um, maybe even make a light blue since you have some blue and white. Uh, so we're going to be doing a bunch of those different things too. So if you are working on getting that lettering in, keep on working. We're gonna do this lettering twice too. So once you're working on it, we're gonna do this twice. So we're doing one coat of the yellow, one coat of the blue, and then we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna paint our background, and then we're gonna come back to our ant eater and add another coat, plus starting to add some shading in there. That way in the end, we get some sort of different effects. It looks like this. So it's all a process, but that's the fun part. Jams, good job. Jenny, fabulous. Good, good, good. Christina Ellis, that looks good. You guys are like true artists already. Tenzi, amazing. 
Good job. Good, good, good. Juna, that looks great. You guys, awesome, awesome. Oh, your son with the background looks great too. Tenzi, that looks great. Good job. Oh, I love it. I love the creativity colors too. Nice. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So, going. oh, we got, I think it's Wrinkly's. Looks fantastic. Perfection. So what you want to do, if you're ready, I want us to take out our largest brush. So any large brush that you have in your set. And if you still have just your, you know, a couple brushes, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter which brush, but if you've got your large brush, that's the one we're going to be working with. This is what we call our king brush. You can take your plate and we're going to start working on the background. If you're still working on getting your anteater and doing all that, you definitely continue to work on that. This part is really simple too. When you've got your paint, you've got a dark blue and a white. We're going to make a light blue. So we have another contrasting color. So you're going to get a little bit of your blue, set it aside in the corner, get a little bit of white, and then you're not necessarily mixing it, but you're just getting your white and you're dragging it next to the blue. See how I'm not, I'm not taking that scoop of blue and making a light blue. I'm just getting a light, I got a lot of dark blue, put it on a corner, grab some white, and I just started just kind of grabbing a little bit off to the side. So it's very, very light, very, very light blue. Let me know if you have any questions on this too, but I'm just getting a scoop of the dark blue, moving it to the side, getting a little bit of white and just dragging so that I'm only picking up a hint, only picking a hint of that blue. And you're gonna make a halo around Peter. So you take your brush very slowly. You're just gonna drag your brush. Mine has a little bit of yellow in there, totally okay. And you're just making a nice little halo all the way across. The idea is you want, we want our strokes, our brush strokes to be curving and really wrapping around your anteater. So if this is your first time painting or if you painted for a while, this is always a really fun, all levels type of thing. So you're just kind of just dragging around. I always say when we do our background, this is kind of the most fun because you're not really working on those fine details. You can, you know, you can kind of take a breather and just relax and you've got all this canvas. Don't worry if you paint over the yellow because we're gonna, since we're doing another coat, we'll be able to paint over anything that you make too. So every time you run out of paint, just grab a little bit more white, drag a little bit more blue, and then go around here, all the way through, all the way through into the ears, all over here. If you feel like you want to ever use like a smaller brush, just because if you're if you're one of those that really wants to get to every single little uh, area of your painting, feel free to go and grab your small brush and like chisel your way into those little details. Totally fine. This is your painting, so however you want to do it. But just adding this little barrier right here works. Once you're ready, you should get something like this. Look how cute he's looking. It's so fun to see it come and take its shape. Yeah, just little steps and working together too. 
So got that. I see everyone's got getting their focus. And again, remember, um, as I mentioned before, since you've got brushes, you've got paints, sometimes you could use this plate of paint. And, and my hope is that even after we do our class, if you have some time today, if your kids are in bed already, um, or if you have some time later in the week, um, paint something else. You may have this as you kind of your like kickstart to something creative. I think that that's so important. And um, we do, uh, we have, I would say 50, 50, we do 50% kids and 50% um, adult parties, like ladies nights or like a uh, bridal showers and things. Um, but what I find is that the adults love it because you, it's almost like you need it more than the kids sometimes to just be able to just paint. I mean, it's not like you can always like pull your paintbrushes out every day. So now that you've got all this stuff and you're here, you're set up, grab something else. Um, I mean, you can really paint on anything. Uh, so I, I hope that it, this encourages you to continue painting and just doing something creative. And then you've got like a cute little souvenir. If you've never done, I mean, before all the, before everything that's happened and all the zooming this is a I haven't never dove into a virtual paint party and now it's been it's been um a new way that a lot of kids do their birthdays so you have a little souvenir from this time you know that you can always look back and say look who we did uh so you've got this so once you've got this here's the fun part you've got your little halo around Peter now I want you to paint everything around your canvas free form it, just hold your brush. You can make all sorts of different strokes. Uh, you can continue to get a little bit of this white, drag a little bit more of this blue if you like. And then you can kind of just do a lot of sweeping motion. The one thing that I'm asking when you're doing this is I wanna see different shades of your blue. So it shouldn't be a flat dark blue. It shouldn't be a flat light blue. I want to see pops of, see, I'll zoom in here. See how this has like pops of dark blue, pops of white, light blue. You want to have that texture because that's really what's going to give your painting that pop. So take your time. And um, I really added this here for, for you if you wanted to just, you know, feel like a professional and you're just like carefully and carefree, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and just go ahead and fill in the sides grab more paint. If you like the dark blue look, maybe grab a little bit more dark blue, a little bit of white, and just add to your painting as long as it's not one solid color. I mean, you can definitely also incorporate a little bit of your yellow in there, but the one thing I have to tell you is what yellow plus blue equals green. So if you paint over it too many times, you might get a green background, which might actually look cool if you like that. So up to you however you want to do your background, but take a deep breath and enjoy just kind of just free flowing and just painting however, whatever you want, all the way to your sides. You've got a little halo around Peter anyway, so he's good. And then just keep working all the way around. If you want extra credit and paint, you wanna paint like the sides of your canvas, if you're using that, you can paint the sides. If you're doing the sides, you wanna do all four corners. And then we'll just meet right here again once you're done. So grab some paint and just keep on going all the way around. If you want to add where it's like all sorts of different highlights, see how this has like dark blue and white, dark blue and white, you gotta paint and move, paint and move. So when you're painting, if you're painting the same place over and over again, let's say I'm going here, I'm painting, you're just getting the two colors and it's just gonna mix into a light, the light blue. Like the blue and the white will just mix. So if you want that texture where all the colors are, are different grades, you wanna paint and move, paint and move, paint and move, and just wrap around your canvas. What you'll notice is if you're painting on like one of these canvases, you'll feel it's not like a piece of paper. It doesn't, sometimes your paint dries fast and it can really soak up into your canvas. If you ever have that problem where you feel like your paint is getting dry, like no matter how many times you paint, you can't get into those little grooves uh, because your, your canvas is made out of cotton. A tip that you could do is you can get a little bit of water from your water cup and add a little water to your paint. 
So take like little drops of water and add it to your paint. And that's just gonna give it enough moisture to absorb into your canvas. So if you ever come across that, especially when we're painting such a large uh, area, sometimes you'll find spaces that you just can't get into. So get a little bit of your water and just keep moving. So paint and move, paint and move. around. And one thing I always ask too is take a step back, look at your painting. Sometimes you get really fixated in like one area you're painting, but you're like, but when you take a step back, you ever seen when you're like, oh, when you look far away, your painting looks amazing. That's what you want. You want that far away look. So take a step back, look at it. I'm sure it's fabulous, but don't worry about any like little spaces too. And if you're painting in a group, I'm sure everyone around you thinks that you're doing a fantastic job. Oh, I love that. So Jenny Kennedy, what had that is such a great idea. She put her year, she put 86 and put like a cool star. I don't know if we can like highlight you, Jenny, so that you could show everybody. I can try. Let me sit. The reason I, I did that, okay, I'm just going to do a little plug for reunions because we're celebrating reunions ending in ones and sixes. Oh, yeah. Year. So class of 86 is having reunion. This, yeah, it's, our first, it's our first ever reunion. We've never had a reunion before. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. So Friday and Saturday, you guys will be doing things, right? We just are doing something for all the reunions are like Friday night and there's like a zoom reception. Fun. So if you're a one or an 80 or a six year of graduation, it's not, it's not too late to sign up. So like 71 or 76 or 91 or 96. And also the year 2020, they, they're having, a, obviously, celebrating them. They need a lot of love. They need a true. lot of love, yeah. Yes, that looks great. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for the plug. I love that. Yeah. Um, and, and next year, they'll be doing classes that end in um, two and seven, so 2002 or 2007. So if you're one of those, um, make sure you join that. Thank you. How oh, fun. Are there any 86s or? Yeah, raise your hand if you're a fellow 86. Oh, I see a hand. Is it Ann? Ann Chung? Did you raise your hand for that too? 86? Oh, hi. I'm actually um, 2006. But 2006. 2006. Okay, so yeah. you know, we this year, celebrating this year. Check it out. What's the what's the kind of the layout like for the reunions? It's a, is it all virtual? As you said, there was no, like a it's all virtual. So if we were on campus, I guess it would be a reception. But it's like a Zoom, um, a Zoom get together, and we've got a slideshow and a toast, and there were gift boxes sent out, and and uh, so it's kind of just a time to celebrate and bring you know have memories and get togethers, and there'll be breakout rooms and. Well, I don't know. It's the first time ever. I hope it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've been planning really hard to to make it all happen. And then uh, you can come and join. We have um, a virtual exhibition going on the next day. Um, then we're also the pep um, band will be playing. And so, yeah, definitely check it out. I'll put it in the chat. On how yeah, there's so do. many neat things with the whole homecoming. There's like a wine tasting and a bunch of lectures and different organizations, different schools and sororities are having reunions. So, yeah. I've never been to a reunion, obviously. So. Yes, you need to come back. And I live in Virginia, so I wouldn't, it would have been hard to go anyway. See, this is the beauty of the virtual land. Yeah. So wait, so what time is it there right now? Oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's almost 11. So. Hey. Well, let's. This is like the, this is like the me time. Yeah. So I'm sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. How fun. Yeah. You know, that's the other thing that we've noticed this virtual, that many of you know already, but this virtual environment is allowing us to reach uh, alumni across the U.S., across the globe, um, where we weren't be able to, to have them partake in our activities before. Oh, fun. That's so exciting. Yeah. Is anybody else from out of state too? Or, oh, I see a hand raised. Charna oh. Silver, where are you from? 
Let's see. Oh, can't find her. Charna, are you from, you raise your hand. Are you in another state too? I, I'm, uh, I'm in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Woo! Oh, nice. Beautiful. Can't, can't argue with I that one. I graduated in 75. Oh my gosh, how awesome. Is it cold there? Um, yes, it's very cold. Well, you've got that nice um, cow neck sweater on, so it must be. How fun. It's snowing out there. Well, it's not snowing now, but there's snow on the ground. Wow, so you're on the Nevada side. Yeah. How exciting. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from out of state or out of area? I'm in Arizona. Woohoo! Where it's very warm. Sorry, it's like 80 degrees here today. <laughs> and uh, I am class of 81. So it's our reunion also 40 years. Uh, congratulations. Wow. I am only 50 years old. So clearly... <laughs> I couldn't have graduated 41 years ago. You were um, a Doogie Hauser young. I was just a baby <laughs> then, yes, clearly. Anaya, is that how you say your name? Did you say you're from out of, you have to hit the unmute. Yeah, yeah. Are you, hello, are you? I'm in Honolulu, Hawaii. <gasps> oh, I see an ocean um, photograph in the background. Yeah, so I, it's painting, yes. I love it. Thank you for being here. So she's got the better end of the deal. It's the afternoon there for you, right? I, and yes, it's, it's early uh, 6 p.m. for us. And I am a colleague of Sharna Silver. So uh, we went to school together. Oh, how fun. So you're virtually enjoying something together. Oh, very I fun. love it. Very fun. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, yay. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Good job, everybody. How's everybody's free forming background going? Good, 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 good. Remember, if you want to do the sides and the bottoms too, go ahead and do that too. And then go all the way to the sides, all the way to the corners. And then this will give your painting some time to dry. But now that when we hop back into getting our yellow, it should be dry enough that we put another coat and this time and just giving you a preview of what we're doing next once we get into painting the yellow again we're going to get a little yellow and then a little dash of white to just get all of our shading in so that's going to be our next step is going to be the shading so this part is a really fun part and then we get into a little bit more of like a technical shading thing but you've got it by this time you're guys are professional painters now you guys can get all those little corners in the brush that we're going to be using for our next step and again if you're still working on your background keep on working but our next step is going to be going back to that middle brush so that middle middle brush that queen brush is what we're going to be using next so let me go ahead and zoom in and show you the kind of shading we're going to be doing so we're going to do another coat and the key is the idea is this you want to be able to cover the pencil line or cover your the carbon tracing line we want to cover that up as much as we can because we don't need that anymore we've got our our painting all set to go so we're just going to go ahead and just make another coat of yellow then we're going to highlight different aspects of peter like right here where his feet are or just making sure that his tail here pops and then that's going to be just all a little bit of shading with that blue and then we're going to also make sure we get the eye in and then we're good to go So I just typed in, the, ignore the first one that I typed because I had two dots, um, but homecoming.uci.edu. And um, you can, it doesn't link there, but you can copy and paste it and put it into your browser. And there's um, all sorts of events going on at February 26th on Friday and then on Saturday also. And how is everyone doing with their backdrop? It's hard for me to really know, like, if should we go on to the next step, or do you guys are still on to this this step and enjoying it? I know everyone's kind of in a different. Oh, you guys! I know that everyone's showing you. It looks amazing. 
Good job. Jason's group looks good. Gabrielle's looks good. Natalie looks good. Christina. Awesome. Bobby, Bobby that looks all oh, class of 11. She did a star. Oh, I like that you had it. So it looks like Bobby is, is a Steven or son did a cute one too. He used like markers and Sharpies. Hey, that looks great. Jennifer, oh, yeah. I packed looks up good. all my paints already. What was that? I packed up all my paints and storage. So I just use markers. Hey, Sharpie. oh, hey, that yeah. works. That, that is perfect. You could use so whatever you want. Good job, everyone. All right. If you're ready for the next step, and again, if you're still working on the background, enjoy. Keep on working. If you're ready for this next step, what we want to do this time, we are going to do the same thing. We're getting a little bit of that yellow the first time, and I'm using that middle queen brush. So grab some yellow, but this time add a dash of white. So you're getting your yellow and then you're getting a little corner of white. So find like a space in your white where there isn't any blue or anything in there. So you've got a lot of white, a lot of yellow and a little dash of white. A lot of yellow, a little dash of white. Go ahead and this time trace around or so paint around your yellow one more time. And then that white should follow. That white should give you a little bit of a highlight when you are painting and you're taking your yellow and getting a little white and then you start running out of white, grab a little bit of yellow and white again. You want this part to be really chunky. So we've got our base, we painted it once, and this time I want this paint to be really chunky. So get big scoops of your yellow and your white. And I want to be able to see like you, the, the white popping up. So the only way to do that is really just getting a lot of paint and you're just painting. It's okay if, um, if you paint over something, totally fine. But you wanna go ahead and just get another coat and coat around and get Peter's paws in there. Making that color just really vibrant making sure you get that white. That white is key to getting the highlighting. Ooh. And it's all in the details. And you know, you're, you're in front of your canvas more than I can see it. So you know when you'll start to see that big definition. And I wanna get all that in there, paint in the ears, around the eyes, nose, feet. If you feel like you're painting, but you're not seeing that white, you're not seeing that white pop, you could always just clean out your brush, get a nice clean brush, like take off all that yellow, wipe it on your napkin, just get some solo white. So now, once you've painted the entire thing, get a little bit of just white and use that to highlight around the tail. So I'll get really close and show you. You're just getting a little bit of that white to highlight it. So you want to highlight around the tail, around the two feet, and around the nose, and especially the ears because they kind of overlap. So right now you probably can't even tell like how many feet there are. So we need to bring that back. Champs, did you have a question? No. Looking good. It's looking like Peter. <laughs> a lot of Peters in the house. In the Zoom house. Good job, everybody. Monica Tran, how's your art looking? Show, show us. Oh, cute. Oh, that's cute. You did it in a little circle. Creative. Nice. In a, in, is that like in a notebook you did it? It's a watercolor notebook that I've used once. <laughs> oh, now you've used <laughs> it. Go. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm glad that you guys are using all of your stuff. Sometimes, I feel like sometimes you already have our supplies at home. Yeah. Like Sharpies, like Bobby had Sharpies. Like you really could use anything. Um, 
it's just really just making it mindful and just taking that time to do something creative. Uh, and, and that's what I'm seeing a lot of, especially kids too. Kids really need it right now too, with schools opening and closing. And I, and I know that firsthand, um, how important it is to just be creative and just doing something, uh, as simple as that can really just like ease your mind and just kind of just reset yourself too. So it's kind of nice that, um, that, you know, that you have the time to do that today. When you're ready, I know everyone's still painting your yellow. Get that nice coat in, make sure that you've got those pops of white showing up as a highlight. Tenzi, that looks good and your son's is looking good too. All the kids in this class is doing fantastic. Fantastic, Look looks good. He looks great, good job, good job. Good oh good. yeah, we got a close up. Wow, he's got the grass hill. Oh, he's got the ant hill, he's eating ants. Yeah. Does anybody have any kids that are, or I guess, yeah, they graduated and have kids going to UCI now or also graduated from UCI? I do. I'm class of 82 and my son and my son already graduated three years ago and my daughter's a current student. Whoa, oh. Ann Eater family, legacy family. Yes, we are. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. My That's sister fun. graduated, my brother-in-law graduated and my other brother-in-law graduated. So oh, we're, we're a big UCI family. You oh. know how to eat ants really well. <laughs> <laughs> zot, zot. Wait, Christine, I see it. Christine Shepard, there was a cute little white thing that just came to visit. Oh, look at the puppy. <laughs> cute. Oh, puppy therapy. Hi. <laughs> this is the best part too at home. You get to see people's little animals. Love it. Cute. So that's our my... ants too. <laughs> So Chams and I are sisters and we both went to UCI. So yes. Yeah, so where'd she go? Erin, I don't see her on here. Oh, there I she is. The resemblance. Yes. Oh my her gosh. Real name, her real name is Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> but she just put Chams on there. Okay. Anyway. I, my kids call me Chams because they could oh. never get me to answer when I, they said mom. So they made up a new name and they just call me Chams. Oh, Chams. I love it. But yeah, Erin is my sister. I don't want to tell you unless she was willing to tell you that. <laughs> well, you look like each other. I see the resemblance. Tell I love it. I didn't so, even ask her if I could tell her. <laughs> another, um, another joint event that you can socially distance and enjoy each other. That's awesome. She's in, Cal she's in Huntington Beach. I'm in Arizona. So yeah. We got Arizona. We got Nevada. We got Hawaii. We got Virginia in the house we've got Irvine in the house <laughs> good job everyone when you're ready take your baby brush that small baby brush get a little bit of blue and then highlight your remember how we were going back to this we were going back to that eye looks like an acrylic nail or the candy corn shape out your eye do, do this very slowly and very lightly but we're going to start diving into the details of your painting but you want to get a little bit of your baby blue or excuse me your dark blue and then shape out the eye very slowly shape out the eye this time you might have to really just kind of take your time and get really close but you want to get and shape it out your brush, your smallest brush, doesn't hold a lot of paint. It's not like the king brush. So you always have to kind of dip brush, dip your painting a little bit more every time. So get a little bit more blue, take your time, go around it and just shape the eye out. And you should have something like, like that. Oh, Devon, that looks good. Devon Jennings has like a, he has got his UCI in there too. Good job. Love the dark background too. Thanks. Good job, everybody. What am I doing? So get your eye in. And then last step is getting the highlighting and you are good to go. So you've got your eye, you've got two coats on your yellow. You've got your awesome textured background that I love seeing from everybody. And then we're gonna start looking into getting these little highlights 
just to shape out and define your painting more. So you wanna get those little highlights in there. And then if you need to, we can also paint the UCI one more time with the white. If you feel like when you painted it blue once um, and needed a little bit more, you can do that too. So we're still working with our baby brush. So grab your baby brush, get a little bit of your blue and the places to highlight, the places to highlight is gonna be important spots. I'll show you right here. Let's start in the back. Let's work our way from back to front, but get a little bit of your brush strokes right here on the tail and then highlighting to separate each foot. See how right there, it's just a little bit of highlight, back foot, curve, curve, just to just so that we know where the separation is. So what that looks like is you're gonna take your canvas, you're gonna take your baby brush and you're lightly taking a little bit of blue and you're just lightly grabbing some paint. So you're gonna need to have your paint next to you really close because you're gonna need a lot. Lightly make little strokes. It doesn't have to be defined and it doesn't have to have, doesn't have to follow anything. You'll notice that that blue that I just made is, doesn't even cover all of the white yellow. Don't even worry, it's really just to highlight. Highlighting our quick strokes. So just make them quick and then we have a saying and you could say this to yourself, say this to your group. Actually, if you're with a group um, or to yourself, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, love it and leave it. Love it and leave it. Because you're gonna get somebody next to you who's like, ah, oh, it doesn't look that good. Look, you know, do it once, get your stroke in. This is highlighting and then love it and leave it. And sometimes you gotta tell yourself that. When I was doing this painting, I have to tell myself too to love it and leave it because you could really just like be fixated in like one little area. And even though Peter is a simple painting to do, you're gonna keep going. You can keep painting over and over. So just have your highlights in there, love it and leave it. So the back, little scoop for the tail, making sure you get some defining parts right here where the little um, edges of his hair is. You got your two feet, now hop over to the front. Same thing, you're just getting the back, highlighting, curve, highlighting, curve. No rhyme or reason, nothing is, you know, measured and get right here. Just define this little area as well too. So you've got this part, I'll zoom in. So if you need to look at it a little bit more, You're just getting a dash of blue, just a little dash of blue. Highlight the areas. Now, the most important thing is the, the ears are right here. Is it antenna maybe? I don't know, well, this part of the anteater. Um, you wanna make sure that you can highlight those separately. So you're gonna do, look something like this. Highlight both of those. Get right in here. And then take a step back. When it comes to highlighting, when you're making these little strokes, the important thing is taking a step back. It has to be the bigger picture. It's not necessarily like, like one little corner. We're looking at bigger picture here. So take a step back, look at your painting, see what the bigger picture has got for you. If you need to, if you need to take your baby brush again, get your rest of your blue and re-highlight the inside of the shirt. So if you wanna make this darker, as I mentioned before, we did one coat, you could do two coats. You can highlight and while you have your baby brush out, take a little bit of blue and coat around the shirt one more time. You can take a little bit of white as well. So I'm getting my baby brush, getting a little white, and I'm using that white to do similar to what we did with Peter where we highlighted 
his feet and all that, but this time I'm getting a little white and highlighting right here on the shirt. Gives it a little bit of dimension. And seeing everybody's work, you definitely can do that part too. And once you've got that, you are good to go. Take a minute there to highlight. If you have questions on the highlighting, let me know. I'm going to zoom in on here so you can kind of see the different spots that I added, that yellow and blue. job everybody and then make sure you've got good job Juno that looks great I like your texture in your background too looks amazing good 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 Margaret Smith that looks so good wow amazing nice yeah Jennifer Risner that looks great too you guys are showing the ant eater pride here. Oh, look at the two of you. Awesome. Margo and Emily Reyes. That looks so good. Good job, guys. Yay. Wow. What about our, all the kids that are in the class? How are your paintings going? Good. Look at that. That's I cool. like yours too. Is it Margo or Emily's? You guys, both of you did a great job. You're like a mommy and me paint night today. Mm -hmm. That's great. So I'm going to give you a few more minutes to. Just add the finishing touches. I'm gonna to do one quick checklist. Ada Clark, that looks great. Looks like your son did a great job. Fun. Good job following directions. Jason Lee's group, who did that? That looks great, the highlighting. That nice. must be great, Lee's. Woohoo. Juna, that looks good. Awesome, awesome. So I'll give you a few minutes to just add to your final details. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to take a group picture. So what we're going to do is you're just going to take your painting and smile, own it, love it. And then we'll just take a quick snapshot. And then maybe um, and then Wendy can find a way to, to access it to everybody too. Um, but that looks really good. Julie Holt, that looks so good. You guys, Ruby, I feel like the, like, just like this anteater pride today. So I'm going to do a quick checklist and Brickman, that looks great too. Let's do this. So as long as, so I'm going to give you a few things, as long as you could say yes to all this, your painting is complete in my book, but I hope you continue to paint later too, but you should have your background painted. So wait, are we taking the picture now? Well, I think I'm going to do a checklist really okay. quick and then we could take our picture. But yeah, looks right. like everyone that wants to be in it, um, you know, definitely just going to do this. Okay. Own it, love it. Ooh. But you should have your background painted. You should have your yellow with the highlighting. You should have your UCI in the center and the blue. Make sure that you've traced out the eye. And then you've got all of this little highlighting here. If you've got all of that, then you did it. So if you're next to somebody that you're painting with, turn to someone and say, you did it. Juna has a little at eater, like the little hand too. That's so cute. So I'm gonna give you a minute. And if you're still working, go ahead and fill out, keep on working, but show us your painting really quick so we can take a group, like, our, like a virtual group picture. Um, Got it. And then that looks awesome. Thank you, everyone. Everyone looks so fantastic. Woohoo! Let us know yeah. any feedback that you have too. We would love all your feedback too. But I hope that this was fun. I hope that you got a chance to do something great. Oh my god! A little souvenir representing your school. Okay, hold it up really high. We're gonna take our picture <laughs> in five, four, three, two. Bye. Bye.
Okay, we're going to do it one more time because I have to do. Um, we have two gallery, two views of it. Oh my God, you guys. Hey, wait, my computer is not. Just ready. keep on smiling. Just keep on owning it. There we go. Great. It's my computer's acting up. Okay. On the count, of, can you count down again, Michelle? Sure. Five, four, three, two, one, two. All right. Oh my gosh. That's perfect. Thank you so much. I did it. What an eater spirit and pride. And it was so fun getting to know some of you all. And I love the fact, Bobby, there you used your pens and got creative and Monica used your watercolor pad. So thank you again so much, Michelle, for spending time with us tonight, teaching us your talent. You've been fabulous. And I just want to say I'm so excited about homecoming and some of you already promoted it for us. Uh, and for those of you who aren't in Irvine, it's the perfect time this year for you to check it all out. Once again, I put it there in the chat, homecoming.uci.edu. Um, just uh, copy that and put it in your browser and you'll be able to see some fun virtual events that are happening uh, this weekend. And um, also, we I'm involved in chapters with the Alumni Association. We have them all over the world. And we have industry-based ones. We have regional. We have uh, academic ones. So that is, um, if you type in engage.alumni.uci.edu and put in chapters, you can figure out how you can get involved in one of us are one of our chapters. And then next month, March 25th, the next Ant Eater Wellness Wednesday is finding your purpose. So we're going to have someone from our uh, Iranian American alumni chapter, um, Keon Mockberry. He's going to um, lead us through some exercises of finding your purpose. So for, so for some of us who are kind of feeling like, okay, how much more can we do with this COVID stuff? I need some new inspiration. Well, that's um, our wellness um, idea for next month. And I think enjoy it. So thank you again, Michelle. And um, does everyone know how to do the Zot? Oh, look at that. We've got a puppy in the house. Yay. So once again, for those of you that the Zot hasn't been around forever. For, so for some of you, what you do is you take your two, um, uh, your ring finger, middle finger, put it on top of your thumb. And then you pull your thumb all the way back. So you're making the snout. Okay, so you have your uh, anteater here. And so we're on the count of three, we're all gonna say zot three times. Okay, so one, two, three. Zot, 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 zot. Woo! Hey.